It says, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now there's a similar list in 1 Timothy 3, but I just want to just go through a couple of these real quick. But um, a couple of things I just want to mention, you, you know, we can see here that the bishop has to be a man, right? Because the Bible says he's the husband of one wife. If you're a lady, you can't be the husband of one wife. And by default, that's why, you know, you couldn't meet these qualifications. But also it says, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. So I believe, my, my opinion is, is that if you want to be a bishop or a deacon, you must have children. Um, you know, sometimes nowadays people are getting, you know, sent out of Bible colleges, you know, as single men being ordained as bishops and deacons. This is wrong, first of all, because they're not the husband of one wife. But second of all, they don't have any children. So even if somebody is married, um, I believe they need to have children because I think there is a big difference between having children and keeping your marriage together than just having a marriage without children. I think, you know, family is a very big point on meeting the qualifications of a bishop and a deacon. So then it says, a, a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry. Why? Because you're going to be contending with people, right? So you want to be somebody that's patient and not soon angry. But not only that, because people that are saved, that are wanting to grow, are going to challenge you too. And if you um, are soon angry and, and, and fly off the handle too much, you're going to discourage those people. You're going to get those people out of what otherwise could be a good church that they could be a part of. So not soon angry, not given to wine. Oh, that's, that's a... That's a, that's a no-brainer. No striker. You know, I don't have a problem with this one, you know, because uh, I was never much of a fighter. You can see my physique. I wouldn't uh, ever try <laughs> to pick a fight with somebody because I'd just get smashed. So, um, you know, no striker. Um, not given to filthy lucre. Because you're going to be in charge of funds, obviously you can't have a, a greedy spirit or somebody that's covetous because um, there'll be the temptation there to abuse those funds that, people, that you're going to be in charge of but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. I just want to point out there, it says a lover of hospitality. Now that means that, you, that doesn't mean that you love hospitality, because we all love hospitality. That means that you love to be hospitable, right? So it's a lover of hospitality because, you know, part of being a bishop and a deacon is sharing your life with other people. And, you know, sometimes bishops and deacons want to seclude their life from everyone else. You know, they want to segregate, you know, their church life with their personal life. You know, I don't think that's right because that's not what you're called to do. You're called to be an example. And part of that is people knowing what your life is about. That's why I started putting sort of personal posts on the blog and things like that. Uh, I'm not just trying to make it about me. You know, that's not the purpose. But I just want people when they see our church that they see my life and they see uh, what the leader of this church is like. Because number one, I want to be an example to people. But another reason why you want to be a hospitable person if you're a, a leader of a church is because generally, you know, you might start the church in your home, but I think it's also to be accountable to the people because how often, you know, can a leader of a church be one person at church but another person in their personal life and then before you know it, they're crossing a state border to go sleep with some 16-year-old and you're like, well, where did that come from? Well, it's, maybe it's because they, they weren't really sharing their life with other people because if you do share your life with other people, you know, eventually they're going to know what sort of person you are. You can't hide it. And for those of you that are part of this church that know me and have come and eat dinner with us and have come bowling with us and have spent enough time with us, I mean, eventually I can't hide the sort of person I am. I couldn't hide, you know, the type of relationship I have with my wife. I couldn't hide, um, you know, how my children behave and what sort of people they are and, and to prove to you that they are in subjection and not accused of right or unruly. Um, and last of all, you know, holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now, we won't turn to 1 Timothy 3 for sake of time, but you can read that in your own time. So there's a, there's a similar list and then it goes on to the qualifications of a deacon. So the deacon has very similar qualifications in terms of, you know, their wife being in subjection and also their children. 
So not only are your children, you know, showing you that you can qualify to be a bishop and a deacon, but also your wife, it's your family. So I won't turn there for sake of time, but I just wanted to point out just three things that I think are very important about this passage um, and, and what really I would look for if I was to ordain somebody. Um, number one is when you look at this list of qualifications, you'll notice that what is more emphasized that even in 1 Timothy 3 is the character of the person. Because often in churches like ours where, you know, we take the right positions, you know, salvation by faith, the King James Bible, eternal security, um, all the positions that we take, you know, once saved, always saved, we start to emphasize, I'm not going to say overemphasize because they are very important. They're important. But we start to emphasize them more than the character of a person when we're deciding whether or not to ordain them. And I don't think that's the emphasis that God has um, when he's looking at the qualifications of a, of a bishop and a deacon. Because you'll see that, first of all, the, the character and his family is mentioned before holding fast the faithful word. So even though somebody can have the right positions, because often you'll come across people that have all the right positions, but they don't have the character and the family that's required, I think, to lead and to shepherd people. Because, you know, a leader needs to be patient with people and they need to... Um, you know, be open. They need, like, like all the things that it says here, there, there are certain characteristics you need to hold. And I believe that is emphasized more uh, than the doctrine. And one way, now point number two is one way that character is tested and that character is revealed is through his family. Because it says here, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. So we see there that you're blameless. It mentions your wife and your children. And then it says, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. And then it goes on to list his characteristics. So this is why I think it's so important that bishops and deacons have children. And you can see that their children are not just these brats that don't listen to them and um, you know, are just you know, running around and, and, and uh, unruly, the Bible says. Because... That's the testing ground to show, you know, do you have your family in order? Because in 1 Timothy 3, it says, if you know not how to rule your own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So number one, um, character is emphasized more than doctrine. Number two, your family is a test of that character and that leadership. And, and number three, it says here, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You know, unfortunately, we're hearing a lot more and more of bishops that are only ordaining people and only sending people out if they hold to their exact positions and their exact preferences and opinions. And I don't think that's right because you know what? You know, we're never going to be exactly the same because you know the Bible is is a is a is a you know is a book that has doctrines that sometimes people can take different positions on. You know, not. Not key doctrines, because I think if it's key doctrines, they're pretty clear. But you can have different preferences. You know, how the church is run, how you would run around the government, how you'd run, want to run the finances. Um, you know, different positions of end times, different positions. There, there are many different things. But, um, you know, so nobody's going to be 100% the same. I think every bishop needs to decide what uh, standard they're going to hold to of whether or not they're going to ordain somebody. Because ultimately, like I said, that bishop is responsible and accountable to the person, people that he puts into the ministry. So I think just like God in the Old Testament gave human judgment, God gave them the guidelines and then gave human judgment, I think it's the same with the appointing of bishops and deacons. God gives us the guidelines and then puts human judgment in place to decide, do they meet those qualifications? So I'm not really con going to condemn another bishop if he puts somebody in power that doesn't have children. Because I know that some people trans, you know, some people interpret this to say, well, if he has children, they need to be not accused of right or unruly. Not necessarily that he has to have children. So you know what? I'm, I'm not going to you know, be up in arms just because a bishop doesn't have children because he's been ordained by somebody that doesn't believe he must have children. Uh, I personally wouldn't because I believe it's important to, to, to pass that test. But what I, would, what I would like to see is just that the positions that a person holds, 
like the Bible says, he's holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught. So number one, we see that, that he's humble enough to, to learn and to be open to, to be corrected. But the fact that he's holding fast the faithful word, because a lot of people, unfortunately, are not holding fast their positions because of the faithful word. They're holding fast their positions because of tradition, because of culture. And um, it's sad when you ask a bishop a question and they say, well, I don't really know why I have this position. This is just the position I've always had. And you're just like, all right, well, you know, it'd be good if you maybe studied that out and held fast to the faithful word and had a position that was based on the Bible, not because that was what you were taught or that's what you've always believed from what you learned in Bible college or whatever.